But the most important prayer that God taught me is the tabernacle prayer. You know, I need to pray very effectively so that I may receive all the anointing that I need for that job. So one day, while I was lecturing in Taiwan, in a split of a second, God showed me the revelation about tabernacle prayer. And since that time on, until now, decade after decade, I've been praying in this uh, tabernacle prayer. And whenever I finish tabernacle prayer, I would receive enough anointing to carry out that day's burden. So tabernacle prayer is so effective and so precious. And I, this evening, I want to share about tabernacle prayer. When Israelite was coming through the wilderness led by the Moses, God asked Moses to build the tabernacle, which he saw on the Mount Sinai. And when he built the tabernacle in the wilderness, then God commanded all Israelites to come and worship God only in the tabernacle. So in the tabernacle, God was dwelling and meeting people there. And when you see the, the tabernacle, they, it has uh, many kind of the, uh, things through which they could uh, worship God. But now we don't see the tabernacle, but the Bible says, ye are the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And our spirit is analogous to the Holy of Holies. Our mind is analogous to the holy place. And our physical body is analogous to the courtyard. So we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now we don't need to go to wilderness to find the tabernacle. We don't need to go to Jerusalem to find the Solomon temple. You are the tabernacle. And the God who dwelt in the tabernacle and the Solomon's temple now dwells in you fully. And he is in the Holy of Holy of your being, your spirit. And the Holy Spirit works from your spirit through your mind, the holy place, through the courtyard, your body. And God manifests his glory through your being. So as the high priest and priest worship the God in the tabernacle, so ye are the priest now unto the Lord. Each of us, we are the priest. So we don't need to worship God through our representative. We are priests and we can directly worship through the temple of our body. So every day in early morning prayer meeting, I, in my imagination, come to the courtyard. And as soon as I move into the temple of, of the courtyard, there I find a brazen altar. On the brazen altar, Israelite, they would offer the sin offering, trespass offering, burnt offering, thanks offering, or offering of uh, reconciliation and so forth and so on. But all of those offerings represent our Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross, Calvary. So I come in my imagination to the brazen altar of the cross of Calvary and I see Jesus and I see the redeeming grace flowing out from Calvary. I say, dear Jesus, through your sacrifice, through your shed blood, my sin has been forgiven. I have been declared as righteous, and I can now enjoy the glory of God. You know, as a Christian, we are enjoying the glory of God. Glory is in us, the Shekinah glory of God. When we commit sin, the glory lives, and we feel terrible pain in our spirit. But when we restore our fellowship with God, then we once again experience the Shekinah glory come and dwell in us. So I say, oh dear Jesus, through thy blood, my sin has been forgiven completely and I have been declared as a righteous person so I can enjoy this glory in you. I thank you, dear Jesus. Then I say, dear Jesus, through your blood, you have conquered the world and the devil. And now, through the blood, I can have sanctification and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I claim the sanctification. I claim the fullness of the Holy Spirit through the blood. 
Dear Jesus, through the blood, give me the sanctification. Give me the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Then I look, to, look up to the Christ hung upon the cross again, and I say, Dear Jesus, you took my infirmities and carried away my sickness. Bible says, by his stripes ye were healed. So I am healed. Since 2,000 years ago, legally speaking, I have been healed through your sacrifice. And sickness is illegal because it is, Jesus Christ already paid the price for the healing. So I claim the healing. You know, many people are only pray for the healing when they become sick. But if you pray before you become sick, you will never get sick. So I say, oh God, I claim the healing, divine healing to go through and through me so that I will not get sickness. Then I look again to the cross and I see the redemption from the curse. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Bible clearly says the Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs up on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon Gentiles. So I said, God, I'm a blessed person. I will never live on the thorny patch. I'm a blessed person. Jesus took my curse 2,000 years ago. So I am not under the curse of the law. I am under the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I say, God, I am blessed personally. My home is blessed. My ministry is blessed. And my work is blessed. And I am the source of the blessing to others. And I rejoice and I take away all poverty consciousness. So many people are unsuccessful in their life because they live in poverty consciousness. Unconsciously, they are controlled by the poverty consciousness. But I get rid of them all while I worship Jesus. Jesus, I am completely redeemed from the curse and the poverty. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, that ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was rich, but he became poor for you, so that you may be rich in Jesus Christ. You are even redeemed from the poverty. Well, don't reprimand me saying that you are preaching the prosperity gospel. You know, I'm bound to preach about prosperity gospel because Jesus Christ redeemed me from curse and the poverty. When your mind, when your mind is cloudy with the curse consciousness and the poverty consciousness and the failure consciousness, then your life would be fully occupied by curse and poverty. Pastor Frank asked me if I could tell how to become a millionaire. <laughs> but I tell you, I was making Korean people to think in terms of the freedom from the curse and the poverty. I was preaching to them and clearing their mind and let them see the cross of Jesus Christ and redeemed completely in their mind and thinking life. And as a proof, when you come to Korea, I'll show them to you. They are all well-to-do business people, tremendously successful, giving the tens of thousands or millions of dollars to the Lord's work because God has blessed them. I'm not just talking grandiloquently. I'm not babbler. I'm telling the truth because I've experienced in my ministry for 45 long years. And so I say, oh God, through Jesus, I'm redeemed from curse and poverty. I'm a blessed person. I'm enriched and I'm abundantly blessed. And so I am constantly want to share this blessing with others. And I worship Jesus in such a way. Then I look up to Jesus once again as Jesus, through your blood, I've been redeemed from death and hell. Through your death, I die together. Through your resurrection, 
I have resurrected again. And through your ascension, I've been ascended to the right hand of God. So, God, I love you because even though I'm staying in my physical body in Korea, but spiritually, I have been resurrected together with you and I've been seated on the right hand of God right now. So I say, whenever I get out of this physical body, in a split second of moment, I'll be on the right hand of Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. So, oh, I worship Jesus looking to his cross, our bronze, brazen altar, and I see the redeeming grace flowing down to me and make me righteous, holy, healed, blessed, resurrected. So through repeating that prayer over and over again, I renew my mind. Because I, while I was living as an old man, as a child of Adam, my mind was so clogged up with a curse. I was having the sin consciousness and the filthy consciousness, unholy consciousness, and sickness consciousness, and defeatism consciousness, and death consciousness. My mind was totally de devastated by the devil and sin. But through Jesus, I'm a new person. Whosoever in Christ Jesus is a new creature. All the things, especially where you law, all things has become new. So I renew my mind, worshiping Jesus, kneeling before him, looking to the cross. Then through that prayer, I strengthen my faith. I become very strong. I say, I'm righteous in Jesus Christ. I'm righteous. I'm holy, sanctified. I have nothing to do with the filthy things in the world. By his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. I am not under the control of sickness. I am a blessed person. God is pouring out his abundant blessing in my life. And I have been already resurrected together with Jesus Christ by faith. And glory of God is mine. And so through that worship session, I strengthen my faith and also I clarify my vision. Many people do not have clear vision. But through cross of Jesus Christ, I see my new person clearly in my vision. I see myself in my vision dream, the new person in Jesus Christ. That is me. That is me. So affirm my new identity. Many people are having an identity crisis. Many Christians, they have identity crisis. I say, who are you in Jesus? I don't know. My pastor knows. <laughs> if Christians get out of the identity crisis, they would become a tremendous tools of God. We have no identity crisis because through blood, we have been transferred from the sin to the righteousness. We have been transferred from the world and the devil to the Holy Spirit, to the throne of God. We have been translated from sickness and disease to the health and healing, translated from the poverty and curse to the blessings and, uh, and Abrahamic blessing. And we have tremendous experience of the having the citizenship in the glory. So we have no identity crisis. We should have a clear identity in our mind every second. And whatsoever things come against our identity, you should rebuke and cast out. Many people are so confused that they accept whatsoever comes upon you. When they will try to deliver wrong kind of the package, you should compare with your new identity and if that does not identify with your new identity, you must say, you devil, get out of my place with your package. Do never sign your package every time. People, when devil comes and bring the all kind of the package, they sign and accept it. Thank you, devil. Goodbye. <laughs> so every day I am renewing my mind. And every day I am strengthening my faith and clarify my vision and affirm my new identity when I kneel down 
before our brazen altar, the cross of Jesus Christ. And when I see his sacrifice and blood, oh, I thank Jesus, I worship. And it, it can take 30 minutes and one hour like that, just kneeling, meditating upon this beautiful, wonderful blessing. Boy, this will change your whole feeling. When I finish that phase of the prayer, I feel so elated, so uplifted. I feel like jump up and dance. <laughs> Japanese people are very somber people. They are acting very cautiously, but very somber. Even Japanese church, they are worshiping very silent. But when I went to Japan about decades ago, all of these passionate Christians were so happy, and they were clapping in, jump up and dancing. So I said, what has happened to you? Where did you learn this? It's from Dr. Iverson. <laughs> oh, they become happy Christian, singing, clapping, dancing all over. So right away, I also pick up their way of the worshiping God, and uh, I try to dance and shout and release myself in free praising God. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, let's come to the temple of the Holy Ghost, your body, through your imagination. Come to the courtyard and have worship before the brazen altar. <laughs>